So please, Father Kylie, please come up. Thank you. Let us bow our heads for a moment. O oh God, your prophet Isaiah spoke your word. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Like Isaiah this morning, we must say, we will not be silent. We will not be quiet. Something has gone awry in this land and guided by you. We must speak. We must act. There was a time in this country when a man who worked hard could count on a fair day's pay, but not today. There was a time in this country when after a lifetime of hard work, a man could look forward to retirement, but not today. There was a time in this country when we represented the women, when we respected the women and men who worked in our schools, protected our cities, made our levels of government work, but not today. There was a time in this country when we sent men and women to Washington to serve the common good and promote the general welfare, but apparently not today. Today somebody has changed the rules and we will not be silent about it. First came the Wall Street gamblers who crippled our economy, gave themselves obscene bonuses and began the great lie that those to blame were labor unions and the middle class. This is a lie, and we will not be silent about it. When they couldn't fool us on that, when they blamed the immigrants and pitted working people against each other, trying to wreak havoc on a level playing field for workers. But when we saw that for what it is, they de demonized our public sector unions, and we can only wonder, aren't we next. Today they balance their budgets on the backs of the working class. Tax breaks go to the ultra-wealthy. General Electric doesn't even pay a dime and then moves its jobs to China. They say our unions have too much voice in political life but pretend we don't see the hand of their billionaire friends underwriting the, uh, their efforts. Today, in this democracy, we see efforts to suppress voters with a special focus on groups like ARP and senior citizens. Lord, this is incredible to us. And when we turn to those we thought were our political friends, it seems too often lately that hope and change become instead appeasement and disappointment. Oh, yes, Lord, something has gone terribly wrong in the American House, but today we will not be silent about it. As you gave the prophet the courage to speak out, so give us that same courage this morning. For the working people of this country, the stakes have never been higher. As you gave the prophet a righteous anger, so let righteous anger pour down upon this house this morning. We've had enough. We are America's working people. We are the sheet metal workers. We are labor, and we are one. Today, guided by your vision, we say it is time for a new social contract in this country, a social contract based on equal justice under the law, a social contract based on access to work and fairness and safety in the workplace, a social contract where we all reap what we sow and where a man or woman's hard work has its just reward, a social contract that creates a level playing field and not this massive wealth and privilege for a few. It is time for a new social contract and we are going to make it happen. Lord, we're gathered here this morning and we find ourselves, the sheet metal workers, asking ourselves, do we have the will? 
And our answer is yes. Do we have the courage? And our answer is yes. Do we have the conviction? And our answer is yes. The determination? Yes. The heart? Yes. The valor? Yes. The perseverance? Yes. The pride? Yes. The passion? Yes. The conviction? Yes. The commitment? Yes. We are the sheet metal workers. And in your name, Lord, we're going to do our part to make change happen and to put things back on track. So help us, God. Amen.